With the right equipment, the image could be enlarged and sharpened. Jesus Christ, it's Jason Bourne. Hey, what's going on, Internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So we're going to be doing that enhanced photo zoom, which you see in those crime dramas. So what you'll need for this tutorial are two photos. You'll need a wide shot in which you'll zoom into. And as you can see, if we zoom in here, uh, as we zoom into my pixelated face, uh, we can't really make out the details in my face. And you really can't confirm who it is, even though we're totally with that style of walking. I, I think you could totally make that out, who that is. That's so awkward. Anyway, I was in the middle of a walk in that photo just posing then you'll need a tight shot so once you zoom into that wide shot you'll want to uh, buffer into the tight clean shot of that high resolution impossible detail that you get in these movies which is ridiculous but this is how we do it so you get a tight shot same angle try to keep it the same angle as best as you can and now we have all this nice detail and then that beard in its full glory anyway let's jump in this tutorial and see how it's done create a new composition and I'll call it tut and click OK so it starts off, let's go ahead and bring in our two photos and we'll drop it in here. And we definitely gonna need to scale these down. So maybe scale it to like right here. And what's great about photos is that you can take like really large resolution photos, like 5K photos um, and use them in this project. Uh, these are just 2.5K because I scaled them down originally. Okay, so what we wanna do is we want to come to our tight shot and we wanna make sure that our tight shot is gonna be originally right over our you know original subject. So what we want to do is just make sure that this is going to be matched up the best as possible. You may have to lower the opacity so you can see what you're doing. And as long as it's in the general ballpark of, you know, where it should be at, you're going to be fine. And that looks pretty good. So we'll come here, raise the opacity back up, and then we'll come in here and we'll actually do the scaling animation. So let's go up to Layer, New, Null Object, and we'll parent both of the photos to the Null Object. And we'll hit S on our keyboard for scale, add a keyframe for scale, and maybe we'll have this keyframe, you know, around like, you know, two seconds here. And we'll move forward here by a second, and we'll scale into our, uh, you know, image here. And the goal here is you want to scale up until the tight shot photo is going to take up most of your composition. And that should be good. And then so what we'll do is also hit P on our keyboard for position, add a keyframe for it. And we'll move that keyframe to the first scale keyframe, and we can position down our comp so we can kind of keep you know, the rule of thirds, for example, you know, so now we have this all in perspective. So if we come over here and we turn off the top photo for a second, you know, it's, I mean, it's pretty close. You can definitely tell it's not like the angles are not exactly the same. Uh, obviously I'm doing a different uh, position over here compared to what I'm doing over here. So it wasn't exact. So the best that you can do in camera to do the same exact you know, pose and angles and everything is going to help sell this effect a lot easier, but we're going to still do a pretty good job on this. So I'm going to keep it here. And what we want to do is we want to be able to see the back photo for like about another second. So we'll just move the endpoint of our tight shot in. So like over here, we'll be like, oh, it's debuffering and no big deal. Let's go up to layer, new adjustment layer and bring this layer on top of the two images. Go up to effect, blur and sharpen, and we'll just add Gaussian blur. And we'll come here to, you know, just a little bit before this tight shot photo, add a keyframe for blurriness, go to the uh, start of the, uh, you know, tight shot, increase the blurriness to like 80 or something, and move forward in time and set it down to zero. So we'll kind of get away with this. And then what we'll do is we'll go to our... Uh, tight shot and we might need to extend the endpoint just by a little bit go to effect transition and we'll add venetian blinds and we'll go to the first keyframe here we'll add a keyframe for transition completion set this to 100 percent go forward in time to the end of the you know buffering the blur effect that should be good and set it down to zero percent so now we should be able to get away with a very nice solid transition as you can see it's almost like you're not going to be able to see it. Let's go ahead and just run a quick preview here and we'll take a look. All right, running a quick preview here. This is what kind of what we get. And it's almost like even though these don't necessarily match up angle for angle, it almost looks realistic because obviously this was, you know, the original shot was all pixelated and now it comes to complete quality. So it's like it's, you can kind of get away with it. But as you can see, definitely like the window here in the background on my tight shot is definitely way more revealed than on you know the wide shot so just keep that in mind when you're shooting it 
So that's the basic gist of this effect. Um, if you want to call it quits here, you can just make sure to turn on motion blur at the top and turn it on for your picture layers and then you'd be good to go. But I'm going to come here and I want to add on to, you know, this entire scene. I want to add just, you know, a little bit of, you know, uh, I don't know, computer technology, if you will, like an analyzing box and add a few keywords. And how do we do that? It's very easy. We'll come over here to the top and we'll grab, say, the rectangle tool and we'll draw out a nice rectangle like this. Maybe not like that, but close to it. And click on the word fill, and you can set the uh, fill color to none. And click on the word stroke and set it to solid color. And I'm going to use white. And of course, you can change the stroke count over here at the top. And we'll come over here and kind of indicate what area we're going to zoom in at. And right there should be good. And what we can do is go to add, and we can add a trim paths. And we can open up trim paths. We can add a keyframe for start percentage. Uh, set it to 100%, maybe we'll move the keyframe over by a touch, and we'll set the start percentage to 0%. So now we'll have this nice kind of tracing box here, if you will. Make the last keyframe an easy ease keyframe by hitting F9 on your keyboard. And, you know, this should be good for what we're doing. And now let's go up to the text layer, and we can type out our text. So we can type out, you know, scanning or something or analyzing. I'll just do scanning, nothing wrong with that. And we can scale this into, we can scale this nicely into place. And maybe we'll put it right here. And what I like about this is that we can parent this to the null object. And if we zoom in now, as we zoom in, the entire, you know, both the text layers get, you know, chopped in as well. So that's really nice. And that's cool. And what we can do for the scanning text is we can come here to, you know, at the beginning, kind of here, the timeline, go to effects and presets, and we'll type in a uh, typewriter and under animate in and we'll bring this onto our text layer hit u on your keyboard to bring up the keyframes and we'll bring these keyframes in definitely a little bit closer so this will kind of just type in there so now you have the opportunity to composite a bunch of hud elements into here i have a couple tutorials on that if you're interested in creating heads up displays uh I'll go ahead and link those in the description of the video but we'll come over here and we'll continue to work on this so maybe from right here we want to type out the text you know buffering or maybe I should grab like the YouTube icon for buffering. You know, that would be a little bit more realistic, wouldn't it? But um, let's come over here, make this nice and big, and we'll go to the line tab and we can center this up. And maybe we'll put this down here. And you know, that's looking good. And once again, we can add a typewriter effect. All right. And then once we have our buffering text in here, what we'll do is we'll go to edit split layer and we'll come over here and we'll change the text to um, identity confirmed we'll do the dots just make it more dramatic I guess and maybe we can scale this in place a little bit so buffering identity confirmed okay awesome and if we want we can come over here split the layer bring the endpoint in by a couple of frames go forward five couple frames here split that layer and what's gonna happen here we're gonna kind of create a nice little staircase but we're gonna be creating kind of of a you know a blinking effect just very easily here. So as you can see the boom, 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 you know, kind of cool, right? Okay. So you, of course we can build onto this team for, you know, a very long time, but we'll go ahead and render this out. Make sure to turn on motion blur for all your layers, turn out the top. And after a quick render, this is what we have. We have our suspect whose identity is unknown. And now he is confirmed. And of course, I don't know how I was going to get away with this because who's going to get away with that hairstyle. But anyway, I hope you took a few techniques from this tutorial. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this, and please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And always, be creating.